Hi, everyone. I'm Madlena Scheidecker, the engineering manager of Angular. Hi, my name is Miku Getchev. I'm the developer relations and product lead for Angular. Angular is Google's framework that is the default recommendation for web apps. The framework has been experiencing a lot of advancements over the past year. Today, Modlina and I are really excited to tell you all about Angular's momentum. Before we dive into what we've achieved this past year, I want to share a little bit about our philosophy of how we choose what to work on to improve Angular for you, the developer. We're an evidence-driven team. We listen to our users, and one of the largest sources is our annual survey. This past year, we got over 10,000 responses. It allows us to know which specific areas need attention the most. More importantly, though, what we found is when we looked at the comments, there was a theme that ran across all of the areas, and that has been our focus. That was and is developer experience. We want to invest here to make your experience using Angular better in order to build high-quality web applications. Specifically, we found there were two themes within developer experience that came up the most in the feedback. The first is that the initial learning journey today is too long and takes too much to get there. There's a lot to learn, many things to conquer before you get your taste of success, and we need to reduce that. The second is that even if you knew Angular well, it was very frequent that you had to open up Angular and look under the hood, understand how it worked at a deep level in order to achieve what you wanted to achieve. We call this sharp edges, and we want to remove as many of those as we can. As we've been working on improving developer experience, we realized that there are two principles that we wanted to keep in mind when we shaped our solutions. The first is that we want to ensure we're at the forefront of web development, giving you the latest ideas and help shape those latest ideas. At the same time, we don't want to forget and move away from what is so central to Angular, and that is the smooth upgrade path that contain backwards compatibility. We know firsthand how hard it is to do migrations without these kind of tools. Yeah, and we're working really hard on evolving your codes together with the framework via code transformations that we test on millions of lines of code in Google's modern repo before every release. Based on our annual developer survey results, 70% of developers are using the last two major versions of Angular. For example, KLM keeps their website with over half a billion annual users up to date with the latest Angular. They updated to Angular version 15 in just a few hours by the automation of the Angular CLI. One of the biggest things we've worked on this past year, and that has really focused on simplifying the developer experience and reducing the learning journey, is standalone API and with its standalone component. At the heart of it, it removes the concept of ng-module and really simplifies the experience of you writing code. We go from code like this to this. It is shorter, easier to read, easier to reason about, and that just makes it that much easier to get going and writing your own code. More than simplifying code, it removed the need to learn a concept. And it was a concept that was tricky to separate out from other concepts that you were learning at the same time and that were similarly named, such as JavaScript modules. And so then you had to not only learn what ng-module was, but also how it differed from these other things. Now, when you get started, you no longer have to learn any of that. It has reduced the learning curve. So where are we today? We've launched in v15. Many people have been using it, and they've been seeing great improvements in their code base using it. And we've been working on adding more features to make it easier to use standalone APIs and component. The first is giving you a migration tool. This will automatically take your code with ng-modules to one here without, transitioning your entire app to become standalone. As you can see, you even get to delete files, and that is always the best part of a developer's life. We also introduced a way to get started with a purely standalone Angular app. And together with other simplifications, such as hiding the CLI config files, it allowed us to reduce the number of files that are generated by default from what you see here on the left to the right. It just makes it that much easier again to get started writing the code to get your project going. Standalone is all about simplifying the experience with that emphasis on reducing the learning curve. This year, we want to tackle one of the largest sources of sharp edges. And that requires us to look at the engine that powers most of Angular, the reactivity model. Before I talk about what we built, I want to make sure we all agree on what I mean with reactivity. And that is change detection. It is the mechanism that allows you, the developer, to easily respond to user input and update the UI to said input. On this example, 
You can see an error message as long and only as long as the email does not fit the pattern that you specified. So we took a look at our current reactivity system to understand what was causing the sharp edges. And then we looked around the web community to see what new ideas we wanted to use as part of our solution. And from that, we're able to introduce our new reactivity system, Angular Signals. It is the Angular that you know with three reactive primitives to simplify your code development and build faster apps by default. And it's inspired and similar to signal mechanism that already exists in the web community. Building faster apps by default. We do this three ways. First, reactivity can be anywhere now. It does not have to be limited to components. It can be where it makes the most sense for your code. But along with it, it has precision updates. It minimizes the work that Angular and the browser perform to keep your DOM up to date with precise changes. It is lightweight. It's only two kilobytes, has no requirements on loading a third-party dependency, and there's no upfront startup cost when your page first loads. It simplifies your development because it's conceptually simple. There are three simple primitives, an intuitive API, and all of a sudden you can tackle your trickiest problems and fully understand what your code is doing. It is familiar concepts. If you already know how it works in other frameworks, you will know how it works in Angular. And once you know how it works in Angular, you'll know how it works in others. And you can use that to inspire to build a better Angular app. And lastly, interoperability. This is so important, I'm gonna dig into it on its own. First and foremost, it is backwards compatible. If you have an existing Angular app, you can get started with the signals by just introducing it in a few places, whether or not that is a new file or just using it in one existing file. This allows you to control how and when you want to adopt signals. It is also compatible with major reactive frameworks and state libraries that are part of the Angular ecosystem. This will be useful if you have to go beyond what signals can do easily for you. And if you're already using them, they will continue to work and you have to make no changes at all. Where are we today? It is available in developer preview today in v16. Give it a try and let us know how it works out for you. Next in the reactivity space, we'll be exploring how to make Zone.js optional, while also keeping complete backwards compatibility and interoperability. After that, we'll look into how to improve performance of change detection by running it locally, only in the components that may need a view update. Next, we'll work on simplifying Angular APIs around lifecycle management. And last but not least, we'll work with the ecosystem to evolve it together with the framework. We can learn more about reactivity in the Rethinking Reactivity with Signals talk by Simona and Emma. When building a web app, you usually start small. Soon after, with the requirements coming and you keep adding code with your colleagues, you end up with a gigantic code base with hundreds of thousands or even millions of lines of code. For us, in Angular, it is critical to support you in all these stages, from inception to having a large, mature project. For example, Angular has been supporting rapidly moving startups. The seed stage company, now Logic, is using Angular to create a drag and drop platform where users can build internal tools that use AI to automate work. They're saving thousands of hours for their customers, including Pearson, managing content for 110 million users. Enterprises bet on Angular because of the opinionated solution it provides for building large-scale apps in big teams. Cisco has hundreds of engineers using Angular for critical business apps spanning across hundreds of thousands of lines of code. That's why it is important for us to meet developers where they are with a forward-looking build tool chain. For the past years, we have been using Webpack and it has been serving the millions of Angular developers really well with its rich ecosystem and complete functionality. To support the growing code bases, for the past year we have been experimenting with ESBuild to power the underlying mechanics for bundling and transforming source code. ESBuild is a very highly performant bundler implementing Go. Today, we're happy to announce that we'll be also adopting Veed for a development server in the NGSurf experience. You can try Vite and ESBuilds in developer preview for your production and development builds today in version 16. But looking at the results from our last developer survey, we see that there are some more opportunities for improvement in debugging experience, testing, and also server-side rendering. In the next couple of minutes, I'll cover what we'll be doing in these areas.
In 2022, we worked closely with Chrome DevTools to improve stack traces. We are doing that by keeping them relevant, removing co-frame names coming from the framework runtime or other third-party libraries. We're also collaborated on the async stack tagging API to concatenate stack traces coming from micro and macro tasks for a more complete picture. Finally, we're exploring how to improve source maps so we can show co-frame names directly from your templates. We're also planning a series of improvements in our unit testing pipeline. To modernize our unit testing solution, we will be moving away from Karma to the web test runner. After talking to hundreds of Angular developers and running surveys in the open source community, we found that just people love Jest. We're happy to announce that version 16 provides an experimental option for developers to use Jest as their unit testing solution. Now, let us talk a little bit about server-side rendering. Based on data from the Chrome's user experience report, we see that server-side rendering can improve some core web vital metrics with up to 40 times. An important aspect of server-side rendering is that the hydration mechanism it uses. But what exactly does hydration mean? Well, here we have a browser running on your laptop and a server. When you open a web app in the browser, it will send a request to the server. If the app is using server-side rendering, the server will run it, execute the application code, and return its markup. After that, the browser will render the application. At this point, the application is not interactive. It has its structure and its styles via HTML and CSS, but has not loaded any JavaScript yet. As a next step, the browser will download and execute the JavaScript referenced within the HTML. The framework will take over and make your app interactive. Currently, Angular takes over the page and it re-renders it completely. To the user, this sometimes surfaces as a glitchy looking flicker. The flicker happens because once Angular kicks off, it destroys the existing content and re-renders the application. In Angular version 16, we're introducing a new hydration behavior. Instead of re-rendering, Angular will now traverse the DOM and add the corresponding event handlers and create data structures to make your app interactive. Hydration is available in developer preview in version 16 today. Based on lab tests of sample apps, we noticed that this new hydration strategy can improve the largest contentful paint metric of your apps up to 45%. To further enhance performance of your apps, we're also exploring partial hydration, which will enable loading and hydrating only parts of the component tree. This will enable developers to build server-only components and server-side rendering with granular code loading. Along with these larger changes, we are also investing in incremental quality of life improvements. Each one on its own is a small step. They come together, though, into a larger evolution. Let's go through some of these key improvements. Host Directive. It allows you to compose multiple components into a new component without needing inheritance and thus also not the restrictions of inheritance. This was only possible through standalone components, demonstrating how that one change had a ripple effect on the developer experience across Angular. Required inputs, allowing you to mark strictly required inputs so that the framework gives validation at compile time. And now you can remove all of those runtime assertions that you had. Again, code deletions is the best part of our jobs. We improved the automatic import functionality in the VS Code language plugin to better work for standalone and other components, meeting you where you are, helping you in the moment. We improved our router configuration to be more functional, smaller, and slimmer to write. It is still consistent with the paradigms we introduced in standalone components, making it a simpler mental model across all of Angular. Very recently, we built on top of all of these changes the ability to pass router information directly into components' inputs. Another improvement on the performance front is the image directive. We built it in collaboration with the Chrome Aurora team. Using it in lab tests, Lance and observed 75% improvement in their largest contentful pain. As part of the latest release of the directive, we're also introducing automatic generation of SRC sets, fuel mode, and the Aurora team also backported it to Angular version 12 and newer. Talking about partnerships, we're also really excited to be working closely with the material design team at Google. 
building the public reference implementation of Material 3 for the web. Material 3 support in Angular Material will land later this year and will enable significant expanded customization with design tokens. With these improvements, we landed features which combines more than 2,500 thumbs up on GitHub. I know we covered a lot here today, so let us summarize. The one thing to remember is that we're working hard to make it easy for you to deliver high-quality web apps with Angular. In version 16 and throughout 2023, expect a lot of exciting updates in reactivity, server-side rendering, and plenty of features that will make your life easier. And the most exciting thing is that with the ng update automation, we'll bring you along for the ride. Thank you. Happy coding.